All right, welcome back to Women's Strength and Bodybuilding, where we highlight beautiful and talented women who compete. Or if this is your first time here, welcome. My name is Mark, and this has to be one of the very first female bodybuilding pictures that made its way onto the internet. So let's talk about Krista Bach. I definitely wrote this picture off way too soon when I first saw it. There's just something about the frizzy hair and the crazy eyes that almost gave her a mad scientist type of look. But that was the wrong first impression of Krista. And there's a whole lot more beauty and strength to her than meets the eye. Heck, some of it's still resurfacing to this day. Krista's best feature was no doubt her abs. She had one of the tightest six packs to date. I mean, it's borderline an eight pack. And there's a variation of the most muscular pose she used to do with her forearms behind the back that really showed off the size in her arms and chest. It's almost like her signature pose. It really makes her physique pop. It makes her abs and upper body look really tight. There are lots of videos out there of various men and women punching Krista in the abs. So yeah, they're as hard and as tight as they look. So Krista is from what was West Germany at the time. And she's got a lot of posing videos out there of her looking very close to contest shape. You can see that especially in the upper body, she brought a lot of size and conditioning. She almost had the Death Star delts going on in her signature pose. There's an old video of her working out in the gym. And after her set, she's literally talking about how much bigger her muscles got. To which the camera crew then proceeds to punch her in the chest. <laughs> you can't make this stuff up. Such a great video. Be sure to check this one out. In many of these old school videos, Krista somehow knew what the fans wanted to see and what they might be curious about, and she delivered. So yeah, Krista had an unbelievable six pack and overall physique. According to Wikipedia and Serratus, she's had three kids. So if that's true, it makes it even more impressive. This Wikipedia entry in particular has only one citation, which is a broken link, lots of grammatical errors, and also lists her height as 5'3 and 5'4 in the same article. So I'm not sure what's accurate and what's not. Other sites state that there's no information about her kids available. That's what makes these videos such a challenge, especially about competitors before the 2000s. Unless they're like Juliet Bergman and actually still maintain an official website, who knows what's true and what's not? Welcome to the internet, I guess. Hopefully it's on good faith that this information was copied from our website before it was taken down. Side note, some of my viewers hypothesized in my video about Lisa Auckland that Lisa's six pack wasn't as defined because she had kids. There's not much to back this up, and I can't find anything out about her having children. But it sounds like in certain cases it could be believable. And maybe moms have a tougher time attaining and maintaining six pack status than non-moms. And if that is indeed the case, and Krista did in fact have three kids, she deserves an award for being able to bounce back with such crazy size, conditioning, deep cuts, and washboard abs. If you can believe this, Krista's highest placing as a pro was second place. She had two first place wins as an amateur. And here's a fun fact. She turned pro at 43 years old in 1990. According to the Guinness World Book of Records, she's still the oldest standing Miss Olympia contestant from 1994, when she was 47 years old. So how about that? Margie, you almost made the Guinness World Book of Records. Like this video if you think Margie should come out of retirement just to beat Krista's record. So let's get into Krista's contest history. In 1987, she placed second at the German Championship, second at the Europa, and second at the World Championship. In 88, she won the Europa. In 89, she placed second at the German Championship and first at the World Games, which is where she won her IFBB Pro card. In 1990, she placed fourth at the Miss International. In 91, she placed fourth at the Italy Grand Prix. In 92, she placed 12th at the Jantana. In 93, she placed 7th at the Jantana and also competed at the Olympia, but didn't end up placing. 1994 was her best pro placing at the Canada Cup where she took second. 94 was her Guinness World Book of Records appearance at the Olympia, where she placed 12th. 95 was her last appearance that I can find, which was at the Jantana where she took 5th. So, just like Paula Suzuki, Krista had some wide gaps in her placings. I mean, you take a look at how incredibly huge and shredded she looked in these videos where she's getting punched, and it doesn't quite add up, does it? Especially considering that she didn't start competing until she was 39 or 40. My only thought is that she might have been holding on to more water weight in the older videos, and maybe when she pulled the water out of her physique for shows, it caused her to lose a lot of the size and flatten out on stage. She was just from the wrong era because if she had this look today, she could get a huge social media following. There are so many competitors that are in great shape and look incredible on social media, but their physiques just aren't suited to dehydration or rigorous contest prep. And even though they look unreal on Instagram, 
they don't end up winning shows or even coming close. It's possible that Krista fell into this category. But since social media was absent, she had to stick to video and printed magazines instead. About a decade ago, I remember seeing on the Women's Physique World website that Krista, who was well into her 50s, was continuing to train and still looked very much like her videos, which is just crazy. We just might have another Ernestine Shepard on our hands. Other skills Krista had were shooting and arm wrestling, and legend has it she was actually able to beat several male bodybuilders at the time. She also met Robin Parker, who got her into wrestling. So Isaiah, if you're watching this, she was a wrestler, albeit not professional, but close. Aside from all that, the so-called biography from her former website says that after retiring from bodybuilding, she pursued a career as a masseuse and a pedicurist. And that's about it on Krista. In researching her for this video and being a fan of her older vids, it really seemed like Krista got into bodybuilding because she liked being in shape and having huge muscles. She never seemed to take herself too seriously. She knew she was passionate about the sport and about her goals and really seemed like she had fun along the way while doing it rather than getting bogged down by poor placings. She said, don't waste your time judging other people and treat everyone how you want to get treated. And those are some words to live by. So Krista, here's to you. Please like the video if you did in fact enjoy it. If you're a fan of this kind of content and you'd like to help support what I do, I'll leave a link to my new Patreon in the description. You can get started at just $5, which would help me support these women with better equipment and tools to deliver higher quality content. Oh, and don't forget to subscribe for more great women's strength and bodybuilding content. Thanks for watching.